Welcome to Futex. As CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk has ambitious plans to advance space exploration and make humanity a multi-planetary species. This mission includes his vision for a Mars colony, where 1 million people will live and work happily on another planet within 50 years. A second home for humanity. By preparing for the colonization of Mars, the aerospace company SpaceX has launched the SpaceX Mars program. As part of their Mars program, which includes the ongoing development of the SpaceX Starship, the company argues that it will help reduce space transportation costs, making it more feasible to travel to Mars in the long run. Despite being in the very bin zone. But what exactly will we do on Mars when we get there? There is a full-length video that details the journey between the two planets. In 2010, SpaceX proposed various vehicular designs for ferrying cargoes and astronauts to Mars, including space tugs, heavy lift launchers, and Red Dragon capsules. Subsequent to that presentation at the 2016 International Astronautical Congress, the said launch vehicle was rechristened Starship, and has been in its creation process since then. The firm has predicted the potential timeline regarding when humans may possibly set foot on the Red Planet. Some flights will carry people, but most will carry supplies. Each flight can carry 100 metric tons of cargo. In the first cycle, a few ships will cross between the two planets to test the waters, but after a few cycles, thousands of ships will travel between the two planets. As the company anticipates establishing infrastructure on Mars and reducing launch costs, SpaceX plans to begin early Mars missions with small fleets of Starship spacecraft. A Mars average temperature is around minus 60 degrees Celsius, making it extremely cold. Even by Canadian standards, though, in the peak of summer at the equator, Mars can reach a maximum temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius. That's pretty good tanning weather in Canada. Additionally, Mars surface is not protected from cosmic radiation since there is nothing there to breathe. Almost no atmosphere exists on Mars and what does exist is mostly carbon dioxide. The amount of atmospheric gases on Mars is less than 1% of those on Earth, so there isn't much to work with. Dust storms on Mars can be immense, and they are a real problem. They are what put Matt Damon in danger when he was living on the planet. The atmosphere on Mars is much thinner than back home on Earth, which causes all sorts of issues, as it can get into any piece of equipment, and cause irreparable damage. Therefore, all items need to be sealed against dust particles entering them. Let's get started. Number 1 The Red Dragon Based on SpaceX's Dragon 2 capsule, the Red Dragon was intended to facilitate the exploration and eventual colonization of Mars. It would have been launched using SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket. It is a Mars lander designed to carry scientific payloads, along with crew and supplies, to the surface of the planet. During its landing on Mars, the capsule was equipped with a heat shield and supersonic retro-propulsion system that would ensure its safety. Its critics have argued that it is impractical due to uncertainties about funding and the fact that it does not address the issue of sustaining human life on Mars. Earth is 4.5 billion years old, but life is still not multi-planetary, and it's extremely uncertain how much time it has left, Musk wrote on Twitter in November 2021. In order to transport humans to Mars, SpaceX plans to launch the Starship on top of its Super Heavy rocket, the most powerful rocket ever built. The Starship is a fully reusable spacecraft that can carry up to 100 people at once. Although the timeline for the first crewed Mars mission has been pushed back in recent years, it is number two Mars infrastructure. In order to support human habitation on Mars, SpaceX plans to build habitats, power systems, and life support systems using local resources, including Martian soil. NASA and other space agencies have identified water ice as an essential resource for future Mars missions. It can provide drinking water, oxygen, and rocket fuel. Mars has abundant and relatively easy access to water ice. The polar regions contain vast amounts of water ice, which can be extracted and purified for use. As well as producing oxygen, hydrogen can also be used to fuel rockets. This can reduce the amount of fuel that needs to be transported from Earth, which is a major challenge for human missions to Mars. Neutron Spectrometer System NSS, is a scientific instrument for detecting and measuring hydrogen abundance in the uppermost layer of the Martian surface, a key indicator of water ice. 
Number 3 Communications In order to facilitate communication between Earth and Mars, SpaceX plans to construct a network of satellites called Starlink, which will provide high-speed internet access to the Martian surface. For future missions to Mars, including those planned by SpaceX, there are several proposed communication technologies that may be used. Laser communication is one of these technologies, which uses beams of light to transmit data between spacecraft and Earth. In contrast to traditional radio communication, laser communication requires precise alignment and pointing. A system of antennas located around the world is being developed by NASA to connect spacecraft throughout the solar system with the Deep Space Network DSN. A DSN is used to communicate with spacecraft orbiting Mars and with rovers and landers on the surface. Number 4 Plant for Propellant Production SpaceX aims to reduce the cost of launching rockets from Mars by establishing a propellant production plant powered by local resources. Extracting water ice from the Martian poles in certain equatorial regions, as well as carbon dioxide from its atmosphere through the Sabatier reaction, combining hydrogen with carbon dioxide to create methane and water, will enable this endeavor. With the Sabatier process, Mars atmospheric carbon dioxide and hydrogen can be turned into methane fuel and water. Methane can be used as rocket fuel, while hydrogen and oxygen can be separated from water to use as propellant. An efficient and robust infrastructure must be developed on Mars, such as mining and chemical processing facilities. Research and development in this area is being conducted by a variety of space agencies and private companies, including SpaceX. Number 5 Terraforming Musk has expressed interest in terraforming Mars over the long term, which involves modifying the planet's atmosphere and climate to make it more hospitable to humans. Upon arriving on Mars, humans must build a self-sustaining city. The first step is to build a propellant plant that can produce methane and oxygen from the Martian atmosphere. Fueling the Starship for its return journey to Earth will require this. A next step will be to establish the infrastructure for producing food, water, and oxygen. Crops will be grown in a controlled environment and water will be extracted from the Martian soil. The city will need to be built to withstand the harsh conditions on Mars, including extreme cold, high radiation levels, and dust storms. In order to protect the colony's residents from these hazards, the habitat modules must be designed adequately. Energy production will be a key infrastructure component on Mars. A self-sustaining city will need to generate its own power. Solar panels are a likely solution, since Mars receives a lot of sunlight. To generate electricity, SpaceX plans to use large solar arrays. Additionally, a sustainable energy source will be developed for the colony, but nuclear reactors will also be developed. Number 6 Where to Live? The best that anyone can tell me is that we live on Mars either in domes, in 3D printed eggs made from rock, or in underground cities. So, we could all live in domes on Mars. We could create miniature atmospheres within each dome village that would allow us to just relax and walk around and do our thing without the need for spacesuits. The idea of 3D printed buildings made from dirt on Mars is truly genius. This company is called Airspace Factory. NASA set up the company. The idea is to create a durable building material from basalt and bioplastic in combination with a 3D printing process. Basalt is combined with bioplastic to create this egg-shaped building. The challenge of Mars is very different from the Moon, says Paul Malott, CEO of Airspace Factory. If something goes wrong on the Moon, people can be brought back in a few days and able to withstand the elements. Musk wrote on Twitter that it's possible to make a self-sustaining city on Mars by 2050 if we start in 5 years and take 10 orbital synchronizations. With 26 months between synchronizations, that would mean it would take around 22 years at a minimum to build the city. The construction of a Mars colony is an enormous challenge that necessitates the application of state-of-the-art technology and considerable financial investments. Musk's plan for launching the initial process of setting up the human outpost involves sending a number of cargo vessels carrying all the necessary resources to start off the settlement, like solar panels and vital systems, in addition to mining tools and construction components. Once the cargo ships arrive on Mars, they will begin the process of building the infrastructure necessary to support human life on the planet. As part of this process, habitats will be built, greenhouses will be constructed for food production, 
and a power grid will be installed to supply energy to the colony. Water production will also be an integral part of infrastructure. Mars is water ice, which SpaceX plans to mine and turn into usable water. There are many challenges that will face the colony as it is constructed. Due to its extreme weather conditions, including powerful dust storms and sub-zero temperatures, Mars is known for its harsh environment. The colony will be protected from radiation and the elements by being built underground, Musk has proposed. The colony will also need to be self-sufficient in terms of food production. Musk proposes growing crops in greenhouses powered by solar power using hydroponic farming methods. It is also necessary for the colony to have a reliable source of water, which could be extracted from the soil on Mars. Risks and Challenges As of now, Mars has a surface temperature of minus 63 degrees Celsius, or minus 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Musk wants to release frozen carbon dioxide from the planet's poles by heating up its poles. As artificial suns, continuous nuclear fusion explosions with low fallout would be used. Despite the great promise that Mars colonization holds for humanity, it is not without its challenges and risks. One of the biggest challenges is the cost of sending humans to Mars. A Mars mission will cost in the tens of billions of dollars even with the development of reusable rockets and other cost-saving measures. A second challenge for the project is the health risks associated with long-term space travel. On Mars, humans will be exposed to higher levels of radiation than they would on Earth, increasing their risk of cancer and other health problems. The low gravity on Mars could also negatively impact human health, including bone loss and muscle atrophy. In 30 years, there could be tens of thousands of people packing up and leaving Earth to live on Mars for good. Elon Musk said life on Mars, especially in the beginning, will not be luxurious. Rather, it will be dangerous, cramped, hard work and you might not make it back. But it will be glorious. Thanks for watching.